In many cases, if we can figure out how to get over onto that right side with the right amount of expansion and compression, then it becomes a lot easier to actually go back over to the left side and load on this side as well. Hey guys, Greg Chaplin here, physical therapist and strength conditioning specialist. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about loading through the right side of the body. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about trunk rotation cues that you can use to open up some space on this right side, which will make it more comfortable to load through it. We're gonna first talk about why this matters in the first place, some common presentations we'll see, the cues that we'll use, and then we'll go through activities that you can use today to open up some motion on this right side to make it a little bit more comfortable to load through the right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So why do we care about loading through the right side in the first place? So if you've watched my videos or videos from people that are similar to me, you'll know that we talk a lot about asymmetry in the body and how this influences positions and movement patterns. And so generally speaking, on the right side, we have an easier time shifting our weight over and compressing down through this side, whereas on the left side, we have a harder time shifting over to that left side and creating that compression on this side. So generally speaking, the right side tends to be a little bit more compressed and the left side tends to be a little bit more expanded. Now where you'll run into problems is if you're focusing too much on compressing that left side, but not enough on teaching yourself how to get over to that right side with the right balance of expansion and compression so that you can load over this right side without the compensatory strategies that are ultimately keeping you locked in that asymmetrical pattern. In many cases, if we can figure out how to get over onto that right side with the right amount of expansion and compression, then it becomes a lot easier to actually go back over to the left side and load on this side as well. Now, in terms of the measurements that you might see that might let you know if these exercises are gonna be useful for you, is going to be limited hip external rotation and flexion on this right side, and then we're usually gonna see limitations in shoulder flexion on this right side, and usually also this left side as well. So if you have less range of motion with external rotation and hip flexion on the right compared to the left, this is probably gonna be pretty useful for you, and you'll probably have pretty limited shoulder flexion measurements as well. Okay, so we got my buddy, Mr. Fibs here to talk about the common positions that we might see. And we're gonna see a lot of differences in the pelvis and in the shoulder girdles here. So we can see hiking up on this right side of the shoulder and the hip, or we might not. So don't get too caught up in whether you have a right or a left shoulder that's higher than the other. What we wanna look at here is actually the position of the rib cage. So oftentimes what we're gonna have is a rib cage is compressed more on this right side than the left side. So we're usually going to have a rib cage that's getting pulled in like this on the right and then expanded slightly out like this on the left. And so along with that, we'll have a pelvis that's usually oriented over towards that right side. And we're also gonna have a cranium that's oriented towards that right side as well. So we can think about, we have a cranium that's over to the right, we have a pelvis that's over to the right, and then we have a rib cage that's counter rotating back to the left. So what this will ultimately do is it'll compress the space here between the rib cage and the pelvis. And the further forward in the space that we get, especially on this right side, as this rib cage starts to counter rotate towards the left, we'll get a lot of tension in this right lat and right QL kind of area here. And then usually this entire right hip will feel pretty locked up. So we mentioned those limitations in external rotation and flexion. We'll typically have limited internal rotation as well. And a lot of the motions over here at the hip will be limited both during testing and during activity. So if you're doing a split squat on this side, you might be more likely to experience something like a pinch in the hip compared to the left and overall it will feel like you can't get as low without some sort of a compensation. So this can actually be real confusing when a patient or client goes to work with a provider or a coach who's looking through this lens of asymmetry because oftentimes they're working on activities that are loading through that left side, but the left side might actually be more comfortable because it's actually in a more expanded position to start. So to compress into that position might feel pretty good and easy compared to the right side, which is already compressed. So when they try to go to load over that side, they're hitting that compressive strategy too early because they're starting in a state of compression. So what we need to learn how to do is to expand this space 
on that right side to then reposition the pelvis and the rib cage, which will then open up the access for motion at the hip. Then as we learn to load through that with the appropriate amount of expansion and compression, a lot of times that will free up the orientation within the pelvis and make it easier to load over this left side. So what cues are we gonna to use to address this situation? So as we said before, we had a pelvis that was oriented towards the right, we had a cranium that's oriented towards the right, and then we had this rib cage that was counter-rotating back towards the left. So we had more compression on that right rib cage and more expansion on the left. So we need to do something to get this rib cage to then rotate back towards that right side so that we can compress this left side and expand the right side. So a great way to do this is going to be with a left arm reach. So if we reach with the left arm, what we're ultimately gonna see is that we're gonna get some sort of a rotation of that rib cage back towards that right side. So I'm showing you this in a very obvious way. You wouldn't necessarily want that degree of rotation, but you can see that we can orient this pelvis back over towards the left. We can compress this lower rib cage on the left to then turn back towards the right. And the way that we can do that is with that left arm reach and a little bit of oblique activation here at the lower rib cage. So now if we look through the back and we're starting in this position, if we're able to get that left arm reach and get some of that trunk rotation, we can start to open up this space here between the crest of the hip and the lower rib cage. That's gonna allow us a little bit more expansion on the back side of the body. It's gonna open up space for movement. It's gonna make it easier to then move into compressive positions like the bottom of a squat or a split squat. So just to review, what we might see is a pelvis that's oriented towards the right side, and then a cranium that's oriented towards the right side and a rib cage that comes back and counter rotates towards this left side. So what we wanna do is we wanna use some sort of left oblique activity and left arm reach to then close this left side down, thinking about bringing this left lower rib cage towards that right hip. As we're doing that, we're gonna keep the hips straight ahead so that we get relative left rotation of the pelvis compared to that rib cage. And we're gonna keep that head straight ahead as well so we get relative rotation of the cranium left compared to the rib cage as well. So now let's go through a couple of activities that you can use to enhance this trunk rotation back towards the right to ultimately get you in a better position to then load that right side. This first activity we can use is a Hemi 9090 propulsive reach activity. And even though we're setting up this right side and we'll ultimately be reaching with the right, we're gonna focus on the left oblique area and this left arm in the setup to make sure that we get that compression and reorientation on the left to give us the trunk rotation we need to open up the right. So in the setup, we wanna make sure that we're not leaning down towards this table like this. We're gonna make sure to bring that trunk back over to the right. And with this left elbow, we're actually gonna reach forward this way to help turn that trunk back towards that right side. Now you'll notice here, I have a towel roll below my lower rib cage. What I'm gonna to try to do is actually lift my lower rib cage away from the towel roll, which is gonna compress up this left lower rib cage area and relatively expand this right rib cage area. Now we can keep this towel roll under as a cue, but the idea is not to squish that towel roll, but instead to stay up off it. So we're reaching forward with that elbow, we're lifting that lower rib cage, and then from this position, we can reinforce the cues of the hips going back towards the left by taking this knee and reaching forward. Now you'll notice in this position, because of the table, I have this knee up more towards 90 degrees. For a lot of people, this is gonna work a little bit better with the hips slightly less than 90 degrees to start. Make sure you're staying within your available range of motion. One thing to look for is if you come up to this 90 degree position and this right hip wants to hike up, go a little lower with this leg first so that you're at a little bit less than 90 degrees. Make sure that this right hip is unhiked so you feel the majority of the pressure down through that left hip and then a little bit in your left shoulder region. This left rib cage should be lifted off the table. So now from this position, we're reaching forward with the left arm. We're compressing this left rib cage away from the table. We've got relative right trunk rotation here. We've reached forward with the knee to give us a little bit of that left pelvis rotation. And you're likely gonna feel a little bit of glute here on the right side, or even a little bit of proximal hamstring. Now from this position, we can take the right arm and reach forward, but we're not gonna allow the rib cage to turn back towards the table. Instead, we're gonna keep it turned back towards that right side. Pelvis is to the left, rib cage is to the right. Cranium's looking straight ahead, so we have relative rotation to the left through the cranium. We're gonna inhale as we reach with the arm, and then we'll exhale as we push through the wall with the foot, and we're gonna keep that foot nice and flat here. 
As you'll do that, you'll feel that hip engage even a little bit more. Then from this new position, we can inhale, reach again, opening up that right mid to upper back, then exhale and push through this right side. And then we can do that one more time. Inhale, reach. And exhale and push through that right foot. So once we've achieved this trunk rotation in a more supported position, then we wanna get into an upright position and reinforce this skill with a little bit of resistance. So we're gonna attach a cable over towards the left side. We're gonna hold it in both hands and then bring it out at the midline of the body. We're gonna be turning at the level of the rib cage. So we're thinking left lower rib towards right hip, but we're gonna keep the hips square pointing straight ahead as well as the head pointing straight ahead. So you've got rib cage going to the right. We've got pelvis and cranium staying relatively to the left. So we're at the midline of the body. We take a breath in here. Then we're gonna exhale coming across. Left lower rib towards right hip, but we're keeping the pelvis square, head square. Inhale to return, exhale, pulling that left lower rib towards that right hip. And you'll probably feel you get a little bit of opening up here on the back of that right side. Inhale to return, exhale as you pull across. So now ultimately we wanna get up and do normal gym type activities. And a split squat is a great place to start. So we wanna load through that right side. So we're gonna have a right foot forward kind of position. And what we can do in this position is do a left arm reach to start to get that right trunk rotation to keep that right side open. Now from here, we could simply move up and down, or we could add a weight to the right hand, which will make it a little bit easier for us to continue to engage that left side. So from this position, we have hip square, cranium square, rib cage rotated over towards the right via that left arm reach. And then we're gonna go straight up and down making sure we have pressure through that entire right foot and making sure we allow that knee to translate over the foot on the right. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Okay guys, so that is it for this video. Just to recap, use those trunk rotation cues to get the right balance of expansion and compression on the right and then practice loading through it. And I think you'll find it's a lot easier to load both the right and the left sides. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Peace.